What's up everybody? Making a tutorial for Crazy Bump to show you how to make 3D looking textures off of a 2D texture or photograph. Now you can make your own textures in Photoshop or you can take something uh, from online. Either way, whatever you choose to do, this program will help you make textures that are believable. Uh, now what it basically does is it takes what they call bump maps or normal maps uh, and tell the game engine or whatever you're using to render uh, say a 3D model with the textures on it it will tell the engine hey this is where the lights gonna hit as you can see over here you can open a normal map to start off with um, the way it looks it will tell the light where to hit it and how to hit it and what angle so it looks 3D height maps, displacement maps are what show the engine what parts of the texture are higher than others again kinda of giving you a 3D feel but the best way to use these is for 3D assets that you're not actually making look like the texture so let's say you wanted to make a wall a stone wall for like a medieval game or a medieval uh, setup but you didn't want to put a model in there that had high vertices or high polygons, you know, that bogs down your game or takes longer to render in 3ds Max or Maya for a computer-generated scene. So what you would probably do is put in textures that look 3D, uh, that kind of fool the viewer uh, that instead of the model actually being high detail, it's just the textures on it. And you could bake high details off of high poly models turn them into textures, normal maps, displacement maps from the model itself as high poly meaning high detail model and then put them on a low poly version of that model which is basically the same thing of what I just explained it just basically takes the detail of high poly puts it on the low poly and it still tricks the viewer for the most part not unless you're really up against it flat against the wall to see that obviously it's not 3D uh, but there is a thing called parallax mapping uh, which will actually take pictures or 2D images in a game and make them pop out 3D so you actually see the bumps on the model but it's just tricking the camera it's not actually 3D and it doesn't actually add vertices it just tricks the camera's angle stating hey look there's a rock popping up oh look at this there's spaces in between the texture now Unreal Engine 4 uh, the starter content has a bunch of these textures that do that. They're cobblestone, brick, uh, rock-like textures that actually pop up. And when I first opened that engine and saw that, I said, oh wow, that's really cool, but it was a 2D image. It was just tricking the camera. So there's many ways you could use these textures, and it saves memory, saves time, uh, and it still looks realistic. So let us start by loading a texture. I'll show you what I mean. And forgive my computer, it's uh, pretty slow sometimes. Alrighty, so... We'll see, we're gonna start off with a... Pretty... Pretty good texture. I have a lot of them in here too that haven't been. Messed with. Uh, for some reason something happened. Another program took over the uh, textures here. It won't show the um, icon sometimes. Try to find the one I was looking for here. Of course, when I try to record, all this stuff starts happening. I'm sure other people feel my pain. <laughs> Here we go. Alright, so we'll start with this rock texture. This is like a perfect example uh, to give you a feel of how this actually works. You want something that would be pretty distinguished when you turn it into a 3D looking texture. 
Now I'm obviously going to start with the one with the rocks popping out. As you can see, it's already kind of doing it. It's just a good texture to use. So here's the 3D viewer. Kind of starts off already looking 3D. And you can make it look even better. You can change the, uh, the 3D viewer model. See, it's already looking 3D to start off with, so it's a perfect texture to kind of prove my point. We're going to actually refine this. Turn the normals down, add the detail. A little bit more defined. Now, this is 248, 248. It's a high. Uh, resolution texture of course they're a lot higher now like 4k and higher but uh the higher the resolution the longer it's going to take depending on your system specs well it's just going to take longer in general but you might not notice it as much with a higher end machine you can change the little details here fine detail medium detail large and so forth Again, uh, once you make these textures, if you uh, have a lot of detail on them, you may want to optimize them, uh, meaning you might want to drop the resolution after you've edited them, or if there's another method that you can kind of keep the detail, uh, but drop the, the size of the textures themselves, uh, it would probably be better. The more detail and more memory it takes up, uh, the longer it will take to display in your game engine. Uh, I made the mistake of trying to do this in Unreal Engine 4 as is and literally took 10-15 minutes for one texture to show up so every time I try to edit it and change its properties it would take that long again to do it so alright so here we got displacement map info up here will always be normal map no matter what you pick obviously it's gonna be there for the normal but it, it's to help you uh, kinda define the other settings and if you need to change things for them the options there again you can see how the walls are already using the 3d effect and this is a really good texture to use I'm glad I found this online let's see I'm gonna enhance it with some detail that's why it's a lot more defined Uh, the specularity is making the light pop up in the middle like that, making it glossy. So if we go specularity real quick, you can see it's really high. But you could also change it down here. You go to gloss, it gets higher, specular. Gloss, you go more away from it, it's less. So I really only use it if I were to, let's say, make a texture with water running down it you want to make sure that you have specularity enabled in the material uh, call them materials because it's basically what you put on a 3d model the texture is just the detail of that material so alright we got that up there let's put on texture influence then we'll bring down the brightness on the since we're on specular, might as well mess with it. Now this is a perfect example of using the slope influence. You can see the borders of uh, the rocks in the specular view. More of a slope, the more white will appear on the edges. This would be perfect if there was rain hitting off of it. You know, you'd really see the glare, uh, the gloss on the sides of the rock. This is really good texture. I can't believe how well this is popping up. Ambient occlusion would be basically the ambience on top of the texture. Uh, and then the shadows in between it. Well, if you enhance detail, you could bring the power of it down. Uh, just 
you know, it kind of depends on what you really want to pull off. I feel that the power is a little higher. It's a little better. And then you bring the power uh, enhanced detail down. It'll fill more of the gaps where the rocks would meet. The shadows actually hit. So even when it's frontal with the light, you'll still see shadows. Let's get a little closer here. You imagine that this is just a 2D texture. And look how detailed that actually is. Now let's go back to displacement. Uh, really make it look 3D. It just looks amazing. <laughs> So a lot of people say they don't really use Crazy Bump anymore uh, as last gen, uh, but it's still good to use if you're going to bring it into, say, Substance Designer down here. I got Substance Designer 5, or Quixel Suite, which is a really great program with Photoshop. Uh, a perfect example of what Quixel Suite can do. If you've ever seen the new Doom game that they're coming out with, uh, ID Software and Bethesda. If you watch the trailers to that, look at the guns that they pick up, look at the uh, the assets in that game, look at the surrounding area. A lot of that was done with Quixel Suite, I can guarantee it. If it wasn't, it was done with a program very close to it. That's how you get the high detail in the weapons and the, the armor and everything. It's just professional texturing and you could always edit everything in between. And all it does, it's an algorithm that uh, sets up layers in Photoshop. So when you decide to select materials and then add textures to the materials, like you could have a wood, uh, wood material and then add a different wood texture, meaning different patterns for the wood but still have the material a certain uh, way, that's what that does. And you could save your presets, you could save a bunch of the uh, things that you make, you know, and it works off of normal maps uh, as a big part of it and color maps. Color maps being where you would select areas to actually change. Uh, so you could change different parts of the model you're making based on color maps. And the color maps, what they could do is if you pick them uh, prior or you set them up in a modeling program uh, matching the swatches, the color swatches that Quixel Suite has that determines if it's metal, what type of metal, what type of wood, what type of plastic, you know it will automatically load those in, but you could always change those later. Now you could select it on the model, the color map, you could view it and click on the model doing it that way, or you could do it on the flat 2D version. Quixel Suite, uh, they have a few professional videos online showing how it's done, but you get the idea. Again, occlusion map. Uh, bring down the power. I want to put more shadows in there. Displacements up there, so then you can see that it's popping out more. Got the specularity. Now the diffuse is the original 2D texture, so when you hear diffuse, just think you know the original. A little bit of highlights. Normals. Oh, let's increase that. So again, like I was saying, some engines will actually make this pop up on a mesh that isn't really 3D, but if you set up like a blueprint or coating that's attached to the material, uh, it will cause parallax mapping, which will mean on the side here, you see how it's flat? It'll actually make these bumps pop up to make it appear 3D. So based on this displacement map, you see that right there, hold on. This right here and right there would actually pop up. So it would tell you, based on the height map, how it would pop up on the side of the wall outward. So it would actually come out a little bit. It looks 3D. It would almost be like you put a 3D model in there with every part was a rock. and It's very detailed, but it's just um, 2D trickery. So let's change this to a box. So you can get kind of a feel for it if it was a wall. Now I drag this around holding down the left mouse button to 
to move it and then to change the light I hold down the right mouse button and drag it around so then you can see um, holding down the mouse wheel in the middle will move the texture around as you can see that's how that's uh, achieved it's this works best with seamless textures I mean you could use other textures if you want but it just this effect with all this works better in a game if it's seamless I usually use it for like grass, wood, bricks, rocks, asphalt, concrete, metal, stuff like that. So, again, you could always change this. Now, let's say you wanted to invert your normals and all your other textures. Let's try that. And maybe these rocks are set in more. Or maybe it's just the light hits from a different direction. doesn't really seem right you know it doesn't look right to me this way so now the thing is with Unreal Engine 4 a lot of people may not realize this um, but if you put in the normal like this it'll automatically be reversed when you import it into Unreal Engine 4 uh, what you want to do to turn it around uh, is you could either make it backwards to begin with or you flip the green channel so if you go in Photoshop, you'll see the three channels, RGB, uh, color channels. So it'll be red, blue, and green. You flip, you invert the green channel. And what it will do is it will invert the entire normal. Um, and so what will happen is they have an option in Unreal Engine 4 where you select the texture, not the material. If you select the texture of the normal first and edit it, on the side they'll have the option to flip green channel. Make sure you check that. Because then if you have a backwards normal imported, it will flip it around and you'll be all set. So then it will look proper like it does right here. Like you see the, the rocks popping out, you know, and the light hitting it the way it does. You want to make sure that that's done properly. So, again, this is Crazy Bump. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will be making other tutorials for this program as well as Substance Designer and Quixel Suite. Uh, Photoshop and a few other 3D programs once I get a little bit more proficient with them feeling comfortable enough to do uh, a better tutorial so again thank you for watching uh, thank you for watching my other tutorials I'm surprised I got so many views in such a short time but uh, I'm glad you enjoy and if you have any ideas for another tutorial please let me know I would love to be able to help people out. Uh, I basically self-taught myself with all this game design stuff from Unreal Engine to 3ds Max, Maya, Photoshop. Uh, I did also go to class later on down the road uh, and got certifications and things like that, but I started doing this a long time ago. I'd have to say I used Unreal Engine the first time in 2002 uh, when Unreal Tournament came out. And uh, on and off past the years, I kind of was messing around with that program, but I didn't really dive into Photoshop and video editing, graphic design until around 2007. And then I really got into 3D modeling and uh, the new Unreal Engines, UDK and Unreal Engine 4, in mid to late 2013. Uh, so just a short time. I've been able to pull all this off. I'm also getting into Autodesk Revit, which is good for architecture, uh, architectural design. So if you are familiar with uh, modular building, uh, putting you know big buildings and cities together piece by piece, that's a perfect program to use. Uh, whether you want to make a full building or you just want to make pieces, um, that's the way I'd go. You could import it into 3ds Max or Maya or Mudbox as an FBX file. Uh, you can edit it further in there, add textures to it, export it again for whatever engine you use, Unity, CryEngine, Unreal Engine, uh, Source Engine, whatever it may be. Uh, but these are a lot of the techniques that you'd like to learn. Uh, so hopefully this helps a lot of the people just getting into game design here. So again, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.